Hi, I'm Cliff, and this is my garage. My tractor has another flat tire, but I'm tired of paying the tire shop to reseat tires for me. So, I bought a bead seeder. This is going to be fun. Hey, welcome back to the garage. And if this is your first time joining me, thanks for dropping by. So I've got a plethora of different uh, vehicles around the house here that have tires. We have, uh, let's see, we have four cars, a tractor, two lawnmowers, um, and oh, well, a couple other things. They all have tires and they all occasionally go flat. Now the worst part about a flat tire of course is when it goes so flat flat that the bead becomes unseated by the bead i mean the inside edge of the tire where it goes against the rim now as you see here when the tire went flat from a broken valve stem the bead came loose on the rim and when that happens it's no longer forming a seal you try to put air into it and the air just leaks out and you need some way to force the bead back against the wheel so they can form a seal so you can put air into it. Now there's a couple of different things you can do to fix it. One is that on a lot of tires, you can go around it with a ratchet strap or something, or maybe um, something like a come along and you can tighten it up real good and kind of squash the tire in and make it bulge out. And you can sometimes get the, um, the beads reseated that way, and that works, it works good for smaller tires like a lawnmower. Now, that, I'm not sure I could get that to work on something big like a tractor tire. The other option, of course, is to take it to your local tire center and have them reseat the bead. And my local shop charges me between 10 and 20 bucks, depending on their mood that day, which usually depends on how often I've been bringing cars in for them to work on, which isn't real often, luckily. Now, the other option you've got is if you've got a bead seeder. It's an air cannon. <laughs> it's a tank that you fill up, and I took it up to 120 PSI, and you fill it through this valve here. It hooks on just like a normal, um, any kind of an air hose, fit like an air chuck or a... Um, can't think of anything right now. Um, an impact wrench, you know, something like that. It just hooks right on here. You open up this valve and fill it up with air, close off this valve, pop it off, and you're all charged and ready to go. So once you've got it charged up, you take this and you insert this outlet in between the bead and the rim and then you've got a really big flap valve here. And when you've got it in position, you flip this open really fast and it, all this air comes shooting out and it like bulges the tire up, makes those two rims, or rather those two beads, push out against the rims and fills it with air and should reseat both beads. And I'll show you exactly how that's done in a little while. Now, in shopping for a bead seeder, I did a lot of comparison, both in the store and online. You can get a bead seeder for as little as like $45, or you can spend hundreds of dollars on a bead seeder. So, and they basically, on the surface, they all kind of look alike. But in digging deeper, I started to find differences in what appeared to be the, the quality of the fittings, and the uh, what appeared to be like maybe in the thickness of the tank or just the apparent solidity of the the overall build um also the the size of this outlet and just the, the size and the um the quality look of the handle it's some of it's really hard to quantify but i ended up settling on this cheetah ch5 from TSI, I believe it is, and I'll give you a link to it down in the description below the video. You can buy it right off of Amazon, and that is the best price I found for it. it I think it was about 150 bucks, and this seemed to be the sweet spot in terms of price and quality. When you got less than that, they started to look a little chintzy, and I wasn't real sure about uh, 
the safety of using them. I'm not saying they're not safe. Don't want to get sued. But I'm saying when I looked at them, I was like, mm, that looks a little sketchy in some areas. And then the the nicer models, well, the more expensive models, they did seem a little nicer. They were they they were well built, but for uh, basically hobbyist use like mine, where I only use it two or three times a year, it just didn't seem to make sense to spend that much money on the bead seeder. So, like I said, this cheetah seemed a really good sweet spot in terms of quality and price for your average do-it-yourselfer looking to do this at home. So again, I'll give you a link to where you can buy it off of Amazon in the description below the video. Okay, so let's start off by getting, oh wait a minute, let me get my hearing protectors. Then we'll start off. Okay, so let's start by just getting this wheel tire off of here. Put it on reverse. <laughs> Now, a lot of times this wheel is sort of stuck. Let's reach back here and tap it. Okay, not want to turn loose. Turn the wheel some so I can tap it harder. There we go. Okay, so let's go get this thing cleaned up. Okay, so here's our setup. We've got the tire up on top of a five gallon bucket. That way the rim is up in the air and the tire is sitting down on the, the bottom bead of the tire is sitting on the bottom edge of the rim. And that way it's already kind of seated. We just need to use the air pressure to seat this top rim. I've got an airline coming in with a locking chuck. Now there are two kinds of locking chucks. One just lets the air come on through. And then there's the other kind that you're used to where it has to hit the valve core inside the valve stem in order to let air out. Now I've removed the valve core from this and I've used the, the, uh, the type where the air just flows straight through. The idea is to get as much air through that valve stem as possible once the, um, once the bead becomes seated. So I'm going to turn on the air compressor or actually I'm just going to open up the line and air will start flowing through and then I'll hit it with the bead seeder, and then that way it gets air in it immediately. So that's the theory. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little nervous. This sweat isn't just from the Florida heat. Now, make sure you've got hearing protection and eye protection. This thing is loud, and there's a lot of air coming out of it all at once, so things can go flying. So safety, remember safety. Let's give it a try. I forgot to turn on the air compressor. Well, that was fun and kind of surprising that I managed to do it on the very first try. So that was pretty cool. Um, I was kind of surprised that it didn't kick harder than it did. I was expecting a much harder kickback based on some other videos that I had seen. And I know they do make larger tank versions of this. Uh, this is, I believe, a five gallon. And I think they make like 10 gallon tanks and probably those kick harder if they have like a bigger outlet. I don't know. Regardless, I was surprised that this wasn't bad at all when it came to the kickback. Okay, everyone, that's it for today. I just got to go put that tire back on and I'm back in business, as always.
thank you for watching, liking, and sharing my videos. I really do appreciate that. Hey, and if you haven't subscribed yet, go down there, find that subscription button, go ahead and subscribe. It's just a little click. It doesn't hurt, I promise. We're rapidly closing in on 900 subscribers. Hey, maybe you can be the one that pushes us over the edge. Well, maybe not over the edge. And when you do subscribe, go click on that notification bell. That turns on YouTube's notification system, and that way, They'll let you know every time that I post a new video from here in Cliff's Garage. I'll see you next time.